muscles of the tongue. Did you know? The notion that the tongue is the strongest muscle in the body is a common misconception. In terms of strength, the tongue is not the strongest muscle, but it does have a very high endurance. Its muscles are highly coordinated and fatigue resistant, allowing for continuous movements necessary for activities like speech and swallowing. The muscles of the tongue are unique in that they are skeletal muscles, just like the muscles in your arms and legs. This means they are under voluntary control, allowing you to consciously move your tongue. The tongue is entirely made up of muscles and these have the ability to move without the support of a bone. There are a total of 16 muscles in the tongue and they can be studied in two groups. As they run in pairs, each half comprises a group of extrinsic muscles and a group of intrinsic muscles. The main job of the extrinsic group is to change the position of the tongue, whereas the intrinsic group mainly focuses on changing the shape of the tongue. Let us learn about these groups in detail. The extrinsic group of muscles of the tongue is a set of four muscles that are responsible for moving the tongue in different directions and anchoring it to surrounding structures. These muscles originate from various points outside the tongue and extend their fibres into the tongue tissue, which is why they are called extrinsic. The four muscles in this group are the genioglossus, hyoglossus, stylogossus, and palatoglossus. The genioglossus muscle is the largest and most prominent extrinsic muscle which forms the bulk of the tongue. It originates from the inner surface of the mandible, specifically from the superior tubercles of the chin or the symphysis menti. From the origin, the muscle fans out to insert into the body of the hyoid bone, blend with fibre of the middle constrictor of the pharynx and into the substance of the tongue. The genioglossus muscle allows movements like protruding the tongue forward making the dorsal surface concave from side to side. Did you know the genioglossus is also called the safety muscle? Here's why. It plays a crucial role in maintaining the patency of the upper airway during sleep, which is basically maintaining the openness or unobstructed state of the airway. During sleep, the muscles in the body, including those of the tongue, tend to relax. In some individuals, this relaxation can lead to the tongue partially collapsing backward and obstructing the airway, causing a condition known as obstructive sleep apnea, which is characterized by repeated pauses in breathing during sleep due to airway blockage. The genioglossus muscle acts as a safeguard against this obstruction by being responsible for controlling the position and movement of the tongue. When a person breathes in, the genioglossal muscle contracts, pulling the tongue forward and preventing it from collapsing backward into the throat. This forward movement of the tongue helps maintain the airway open and allows for normal and uninterrupted breathing during sleep. Now let's move on to the hyoglossus muscle. It arises from the greater horn and body of the hyoid bone, a U-shaped bone in the neck, and travels upwards into the lateral side of the tongue. At its insertion, the muscle lies between the styloglossus laterally and the inferior longitudinal muscles medially. Its main function is to depress and retract the tongue, making it convex from side to side. The hyoglossus muscle lies under cover the mylohyoid muscle and between these muscles we find many important structures like the mucous membrane, the styloglossus muscle, the lingual nerve, the submandibular ganglion, submandibular gland with its duct, the hypoglossal nerve and the suprahyoid branch of the lingual artery. Under the hyoglossus muscle, we find the inferior longitudinal muscle, middle constrictor of the pharynx, 
lingual artery, stylopharyngeus muscle and glossopharyngeal nerve. The next muscle is the styloglossus muscle which originates from the tip of the styloid process and the stylomandibular ligament and inserts into the sides of the tongue. It assists in drawing the sides of the tongue upward and backward which is against the action of the genioglossus muscle. Next, we have the palatoglossus muscle, which has its origin on the soft palate, specifically from the palatine aponeurosis, and extends downward into the sides of the tongue. It aids in elevating the back of the tongue during swallowing, sealing off the oral cavity from the pharynx by narrowing the oropharyngeal isthmus and preventing bolus from regurgitating back into the mouth. Pop quiz The next group of tongue muscles is the intrinsic group, a set of four paired muscles that are entirely contained within the tongue tissue. The main job of this group is to change the shape of the tongue. These are the superior longitudinal muscles, inferior longitudinal muscles, transversus muscles and verticalis muscles. The superior longitudinal muscle runs along the upper surface of the tongue just under the mucous membrane from the back to the tip. Its main function is to curl and shorten the tongue, enabling movements like elevation and retraction. The inferior longitudinal muscle lies parallel to the superior longitudinal muscle but on the lower surface of the tongue, just under the mucous membrane. It contributes to tongue movements like depression, shortening and even some lateral movements. The transversus muscle runs horizontally across the tongue from one side to the other. When it contracts, it narrows and elongates the tongue, making it more compact and elongated. The verticalis muscle lies perpendicular to the transversus muscle, running from the upper to the lower surface of the tongue. Its contractions flatten and broaden the tongue. Pop quiz. Now let's discuss the nerve supply of the muscles of the tongue. All the muscles of the tongue, that is, the extrinsic as well as the intrinsic muscles, get their innervation by the hypoglossal nerve. However, the palatoglossus muscles are the only ones to receive its innervation from the vagus, or 10th cranial nerve, via the pharyngeal plexus. The tongue can be affected by various clinical conditions, some of which can significantly impact its function, appearance, and overall health. Here are some common clinical conditions of the tongue. Tongue tie or ankyloglossia is a congenital condition where the lingual frenulum, the band of tissue that connects the tongue to the floor of the mouth, is shorter than usual. This can restrict the tongue's range of motion, affecting speech and breastfeeding in infants. Oral thrush or oral candidiasis is a fungal infection caused by candida yeast. It can lead to white, creamy patches on the tongue and other parts of the mouth, causing discomfort, altered taste and difficulty swallowing. Glossitis refers to the inflammation of the tongue, which can be caused by various factors, 
such as infections, allergies, nutritional deficiencies, or irritation from hot or spicy foods. It may result in swelling, redness, pain, and altered taste perception. Lesions on the tongue are common and can be benign or cancerous. Benign lesions include canker sores and papillomas, while malignant lesions can be squamous cell carcinoma or other forms of oral cancer. A fissured tongue is a condition characterized by deep grooves or furrows on the tongue surface. It is usually a benign condition that may trap food particles and cause bad breath. Pop quiz summarize. Muscles that make the dorsum of the tongue concave are the genioglossus, superior longitudinal muscles, verticalis muscles, styloglossus muscles. Muscles that make the dorsum of the tongue convex are the hyoglossus muscles, inferior longitudinal muscles. Muscles that shorten the tongue are superior longitudinal muscles, inferior longitudinal muscles, verticalis muscles. Muscles that elongate the tongue are transversus muscle. Pop quiz. With that, we come to the end of this session on the muscles of the tongue. We hope we made your learning experience a good one.